lot of fun too. So the other thing, yeah, thank you, Jenna. The other thing I just want to mention is uh, fundraising. The Somali community in Minnesota has done a tremendous good job. I, I'm sure you, you are aware of the car wash. I'm sure you are aware of the, the fundraising uh, event that happened two weeks ago on Friday. Mohammed uh, Dean was in the uh, uh, Ohio, actually was there. I'm, I'm sure he will be able to share with you. Uh, Somali, on that night, they raised $47,000. And what we say is, if, if Somali community raises, this is how, how much we are committed. Yes, ARC. If Somali community raises a dollar, we're going to be raising nine dollars. We're going to be bringing nine dollars on the table. We're going to be doing a lot of work, uh, whether it's grant writing to the USA, USG, or through the corporate. So what we have done is General Mills, which is one of the, uh, the big companies corporate in, in America. Uh, we approached them, and they give us 25000 immediately, you know, when the drug happened. That's how we ended up in Mogadishu. Our team were heading to actually into a, a, a Galcayo and, and Somalia and Punda trying to figure out. Uh, we have partners in Galcayo called Madam Hawa Allen. I don't know if anyone has seen it. It's not Dr. Hawa it's Madam Hawa Allen. Uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, Somali uh, mother who has done a tremendous good job. Uh, what she's working now is uh, the youth in Galcayo, she built a central we have been helping her since we came back on the trail. She's a very true partner with us. Uh, so when the drought happened, we said we can't ignore the southern part of Somalia. We have to respond. So our team actually went to there. So our program director is a Somali Canadian. Uh, he has an experience of more than 25 years working. Uh, the WFB works safe with children. He worked the, the earthquake in, in Pakistan and in Afghanistan. So he has wealthy experience and talent in Somali diaspora. And our main goal was to bring every Somali talent person to his own league. So this is not about ARC. ARC actually is the vehicle. The Somali diaspora are driving the professionals to get into a decent technical work. So that is what we call the, the true partnership. Getting involved, not only by donate, donating, but also actually helping them volunteering. We are expecting Somali doctors and Somali team to go very soon. And I will quickly go from this uh, to the uh, is, is it, our main cargo is actually here. Uh, our main cargo is here. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I'll try to mix the Somali English. Okay, is that fair enough? I, I, I could only say that I have to mix it. I don't think you speak Somali. Okay. And as well, I'll look Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly summarize in Somali then. Uh, the, I think people are speaking English. So, okay. Everybody, excuse me. Everybody okay? Yeah. I just want to, we have to consider. Uh, we are in Melbourne. If anyone, okay. please, if anyone uh, wants me to speak Somali, please feel free. I can jump into that. There's no problem. My Somali is Yes, I can. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a promise to strengthen the community and take the powerful life-saving action on behalf of the Muslims and their people. Can you go to the next slide? This is what exactly is happening. What's happening in Somalia is really terrible. Change is needed. New change, new way, new direction. If we have to do something very good in Somalia, the international community have been working a lot, international organizations, including the international community, have been working a lot for the past 20 years. But also Somali diaspora have been sending money for the past 20 years. So everyone has been spending, but after 20 years, no one is satisfied with what's happening in Somalia. So we have to change. And the way to change is through these neighbors' conditions, coming together, doing some Somali diaspora as well as the uh, international community, the ARC, uh, and doing some very positive things on the ground. So, uh, what's happening in the Finland in Somalia is the first time in 20 years that the United Nations has been there, and the United Nations, we already know what's happening there. The most affected area is South Central Somalia. We are now working in Mogadishu under the transition of the federal government. Our team are on the ground for the past one month, and they've been feeding uh, uh, more than 1,000 families now. And what we, have, we were like to do the first food distribution, the last food distribution we did was just a day before the Ramadan. We were making sure that uh, the people who are really serving has an opportunity to have some food, something to eat. But also, we're doing more than food. As an international organization, we're not only doing food, what we plan to do is some other transition of the government. We're doing their request to collect some money and delivering the food. But here is the what's missing is that the health is missing, the let is missing. Water, clean water is missing. Uh, and also there's a protection is missing. So the pictures that you will see later on, you will see what, what, where they were living before and where they
that they're uh, trying to do. What we have, uh, uh, what we are still working on, relocating those families. They are right now at an old building. It's called the UNHCR building, right? Uh, so we're trying to relocate them and, and into a calm transitional shelter. They will have a transitional shelter, but they will also have a protection. But they will also have a food. They will have a clinic center there, so that they have everything rather than only by giving them food and then living there. Tomorrow, what's going to happen? Because if you donate twenty thousand, ten thousand, or thirty thousand today, and we buy all the food and we give it to them, what's what's it tomorrow? I mean, are you going to give us another thirty thousand? Absolutely, baby, yes. But still, we are looking beyond it that. So what we're trying to do is what we call is care management. How these people, uh, in the short term, we can have everything with the basic human uh, needs. But also in the long term, for example, if there's a rain, we will provide seeds if someone wants to go back to the solar central area, where it's an agricultural area, we can be providing incentives, seed and money, so that they can go back into the farm. So it's a short term as well as long term what we're looking. So it's a combination of that. The more power company we get. Uh, uh, and now, when we say about inside Somalia, we have to be basically inside Somalia. The difference between the DAF is about there are 400 to 500,000 uh, refugees from Somalia in the DAF, right? After all, it was better than me. But what we're saying is that there are 2.8 million, 2.85 million inside Somalia. So you can compare the number. There are less, very few international organizations working inside Somalia. So we are inside Somalia, and the reason we are is not because of ARC Waterfall, it's because of the Somali diaspora. Adding to the leadership as program director, everyone joined with that, everyone is so excited, and we have a line of volunteers now, doctors, who as soon as we set up their logistics, uh, they will be going to Somalia and inside them inside Somalia. Under the area of Al Shabaab, I mean, uh, under the area of this, uh, the area that we can go, we're not ignoring. Those are the areas that are mostly affected area. But we are not, we are not ignoring. Today, what's happening in our office, the headquarters, we're training people who are from those areas. What they're going to be doing is number one. We have to collect the data. We have to know where it's mostly affected. And what will be our response? Is it going to be very lift food uh, to take food and grab it? Which area needs health issues there? Which area diseases are breaking up in Somalia, the South Central area? And if there's any community leaders who are coming here to those areas or organizations, that we can work. So our part of the plan is actually engaging the solar part of Somalia, Bay of Bakal, the region area, and lower shore area. We're not ignoring. But when you say what's going to happen, we have a team at the headquarters. They will be calling relatives, friends, family members who are in those area. They will be asking certain questions. They will be asking, do you have any food? How is your neighbors doing on? Uh, is there an organization working in that area? Uh, getting all those data. Because once we get that data, we know it which area we can respond in terms of the health, which area needs in terms of the water, which area needs in terms of the food. So that is what we're doing uh, so in the part of the South Central area, particularly the area that's kind of actually uh, 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 Okay, can you give me a sign? Uh, yeah, okay. I, I don't know if some of you have seen it. Kainan has him. What we're trying to do is bring every Somali leader where they are. I'm calling it, we're trying, our office is trying to reach out. Raghu Omar, Iman, Kainan, every Somali leader who we think about that group, Mo Farah, who's up, in the UK. There's another person from Holland who's a well good in tennis. I don't know about the So we're trying to bring it up. Magan. yep. So we're trying to bring the Somali uh, successful people in, our, in the Western world, bringing them also on the board, asking them to be part of this journey. But also we're bringing the Imams, we're bringing the Dutchies, we're bringing the students to be part of that. Our program has a student scholarship program, where when we talk about transparency, two students will be traveling, one maybe from Ohio, one from uh, Minnesota, going together in Somalia, observing what we're doing, volunteering, but also reporting back to the so they can be an independent uh, reporting uh, to see exactly what's happening on the ground. And that is part of our plan, to be transparent and accountable. Uh, Kainan and Bono, I don't know if uh, many of you know him. Uh, Bono, uh, he has been advocating for human rights uh, uh, in Nigeria for the past 20 years. Uh, and uh, he was in Minnesota for about a couple of weeks ago. Kainan also uh, came from Minnesota with him. And they are part of uh, uh, from this process. There's a discussion going uh, as for us how we can work together, how we can be part of Of course, they're going to be generating money, but also we don't need only their money, but we need their advocacy to step up and address the crisis in Somalia. Somalia needs a solution to get it. Somalia needs this.
syndrome does not need to happen again. It happened in 1992. That was man-made feline, but this is natural uh, uh, as well as man-made feline. But also, we have a present. The Somali youth are the backbone in Minnesota. They've been doing a tremendous good job. These are the Somali youth from the University of Minnesota, uh, um, uh, uh, Mohammed, uh, Shukri, and uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, those are very active, uh, not only them, but Somali students uh, uh, at the University of Minnesota, Somali students uh, 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 they have the Somali Technical College, are on board too. They have been doing car wash, they have been doing good to care for the people of the Somalis. But they are very organized. You have seen them, they did car wash. But what their car wash brought, they brought it in $7,500 uh, for the donation. But they changed the image of the Somali youth. In America, they changed the media has covered a lot of them. The media has covered, so they changed it. So now everyone is talking about it. Somali youth are doing a good job. Somali community are standing up. So this is the image. Our image has been not so strong lately, but they are the ones who are the They are the ones. So we have to support them and improve. And hopefully, I will connect with this and see the situation here. I'm talking about the other thing. This was the samosa. But also we, had, we were involved with uh, uh, the soccer, the sponsor of the soccer. Uh, Somali uh, Americans came from different states in the summer, June 20th to July 4th. Uh, they played the soccer uh, from Boston. Boston won, I think, the camp. We sponsored the camp, scored the neighbors' formation, soccer tournament team. But also we had a petition, we had a group there. So we brought all the people, Somalis and non-Somalis. The media has covered very positively. And, and those are the kind of things coming here. Do you see? Uh, when we do a video. We are expecting August 20th, uh, Ramadan Star dinner. The same group of uh, people come around, around the same location. 350 people coming together, doing fundraising in Minneapolis, but also having a star. No people, non Somalis will get to know what's a star, but also they are helping us to, do, uh, to support the back of the Somali. Next thing. Okay. It's new. Uh, we are just mobilizing the Somali diaspora. Everyone, everyone is important. Everyone of you is very important. If you want to get involved in it, yes, please. Feel free. We give it to you the farmers fill it out. What in area are you interested in? We'd like to see Ohioans to jump into this. Ohio is the second largest Somali Americans living in Ohio. That is what we say in our next step is Ohio. We have to talk to you guys and see. But also we're trying to manage US government policy and security issues. Thanks to God. I mean, they lifted it back. You can imagine how much it's very difficult. The area under our Shabbat control is very challenging. It has been very challenging. But at least in the area under the transition of the federal government, now we can spend it with U.S. taxpayers' money there in that area. Uh, and also, uh, linked to technical competency. If you are a, a, a doctor or nurse, we will provide you with the care of the sick things with, uh, from here all the way to Somalia. We need you to volunteer three weeks, four weeks, your time. It's a sadaqa, and you can do it actually. You can help with that home, but also you can help. You don't have to worry about security. Our team is already there. Uh, I challenge that if you do some other doctors who say, What about security? Which is a dangerous place. I think my Abdino was there uh, a few months ago. I challenge can you, can you repeat that again? <laughs> I, I talked to some of Somali doctors, uh, and, and we sat down. Some of them raised the question of that. Well, oh, they've been in the U.S. for a very long time. I, loved, I went back to Somalia after 17 years last year, and that's when I got the energy. Because last year I traveled to Somalia, I was very fortunate to see on the ground. Nothing was different than 1993 when I left. It. So I worked Time Magazine, I traveled by, by double, I took some pictures, and I went to Time Magazine. I was young at that time, don't look too far, okay? 20 years or so. Uh, so we have done it, it, uh, 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 it, it changed me, it really changed me. And I'm sure Mohamed Dini will say something if he traveled that we sent it to Somalia. Uh, when you go there, the reality is, yeah, it's a relative safe, you can work, people are very nice, humble, people who want peace, people don't want to get issues, people want someone to provide peace so that they can go through their life, you know. Uh, but when we need it, when I challenge the doctors, they really issue, there is the question of the security. Yes, medical doctors, any Somali professional who wants to go back and work about the security. Doctors, doctors, nurses.